and welcome to this week's edition of Tribe Talk. Following tradition, we're having the seniors anchor for the last episode of the year. To start things off, we're thanking those who do so much for you. Hey teachers. Hola teachers. Yo teach. Shalom teachers. Salute teachers. What's up teach? Despite the stress. Hours of homework. Boring lectures. You taught me to work for my grade. And that no one would do my work for me. You did your best to make us laugh. And kept us interested. You taught us more than your lesson plans. You gave us insight to the real world. So we are sorry for the days we made you almost want to quit your job and never see a kid again. I wanted you to know. Your dedication didn't go unnoticed. So thank you, teachers. 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 Recently, Park West residents have proposed potential changes in their community. Gina Mataloni reports on this pressing issue. The original Park West vision included a town center with shops, businesses, and other essentials for the community. The proposal has changed over time, and that's part of what the controversy is. The developer has come forward and said that instead of building sort of that area where you'd be able to interact and socialize, they wanted to take apartments, not just a few, but like 300, and not build them sort of far back from the road where they can't be seen, but pull them right up to that circle and go up very high in the sky. Many residents view the newest proposal as a negative addition to Park West. I would have been very disappointed. I probably would have voiced my opinion at the town hall meetings or the uh, informational meetings that they had, um, just because I don't think we have the infrastructure to support that. I think what it will do, it will increase the traffic we have out here on Park West Boulevard. If we put in a new development, even though we'll have nice stores and, and nice residential homes and condos there, it will bring in a whole lot more people and more cars. If they don't increase the roads, or at least the structure of the roads, it's going to be horrible for traffic. On Tuesday, May 12th, North Mount Pleasant residents gather at the Mount Pleasant Town Hall to voice their opinion on the newest Cambridge Square development. I'm very much interested, if, if, if it's okay, that uh, I'm sure a number of citizens have signed up to speak, and I'm interested in what they have to say. The final vote was 7-2 to two against the development. We had a motion from Mr. Nichols earlier to deny, and we have a second from Mr. Garch. It was an easy decision for me. Why was it easy? Because what the developer proposed was way, way like opposite of what the vision was early on. What I hope happens is that the developer goes back and said, look, maybe there's something between what we proposed and what that pretty picture was on that pamphlet that we produced a lot of years ago because we need to get some sort of combination of that. And I'm, I'm really optimistic that th that's what should have happened to begin with but what will happen now, and we helped to ensure that by our vote last night. This has been Gina Madaloni reporting. Now we give the limelight to the Environmental Club. We've got the dirt on composting at Wanda. <laughs> the Environmental Club has been seeking to integrate composting to Wanda's two cafeterias. The easiest way I like to say it is it's like taking out the trash, but instead of their trash going to landfill, it goes to um, be composted and then it becomes like fertilizer, which is so much better for the environment. The way that we would do it here is um, there are special bags that are compostable and they're just like garbage bags. And then once um, just food waste is put into there, it can be taken out like a normal garbage can. It doesn't contribute to our landfills. And also since it can become fertilizer, you can actually use it again. It'll have its own site where it can eventually decompose until it's ready to use. Wanda would not be the first school in the district to implement composting. In fact, if it were approved, it would be one of the last to do so. Well, they've already sort of started to implement them in elementary and middle schools, so it's sort of trickling up. And what we need to sort of do is that since we're going to start having classes of kids who are used to the system, we need to sort of introduce that to the kids who aren't used to the system. Um, because we were going to have separate sort of garbage receptacles, and they were going to be labeled. They would take them out daily, so it's not like it would be sitting in the cafeteria with people walking by. Oh, it would be really gross. If you are interested in bringing composting to Wando, contact Mrs. Cross in room K305. 
This has been Elizabeth Gearhart reporting for Drive Talk. Hey Anna, what time is it? It's summertime! We're celebrating summertime by showing you the top seven things to do in Charleston. Wando has many talented students, from athletes and engineers to artists. Gifted students came together for this year's art showcase. Savannah Hodson paints the picture. Art's important because it connects us as human beings. Art is a universal language, just like math is. Um, people throughout time, throughout space, have always done art. I think art has a way to build a sense of community among people. Specifically, I think it helps to open up lines of communication in a visual way about topics that students may not have been able to talk about before. To celebrate the importance of arts, students, teachers, family, and friends came to Wando April 23rd to May 6th for an art showcase in the Media Center. We caught up with teachers afterward to see how they prepared for this event. The Art Showcase is a yearly show that we do that displays the work of all of our students from fundamentals of visual design to our upper level advanced placement students as well as our new photography program. It's a showcase of the dedication and the hard work that the students have put in um, to their artwork. It's a showcase of their feelings, of their emotions, of their opinions. It's a showcase of the world around us through the eyes of a high school student. We spent countless hours preparing for the show. It begins by selecting works that will go into the show. We then have to present the works, and that includes matting them so that they look more professional for the show. We also prepare for the actual ceremony by inviting parents to bring in food. Um, we do the certificates ourselves. We get all the gifts together and all the prizes together. There's a lot of preparation involved. The Spring Art Show every year is one of the highlights of our year. Um, just to see the amazing work our students produced all in one video and to also be able to showcase it to the rest of the student body. I love to show off the talent that we have here in the art department and the showcase and the exhibition is a great way to do that. And it's just so neat to see um, the students get energized and demonstrate a sense of pride in, in showcasing their work and it's really neat to see the public um, get excited about seeing the talent that we have here at Wanda. This has been Savannah Hudson drawing up the story. This week on The Rewind, we take a look at prom, Blessing of the Fleet, and the jazz percussion concert. On Saturday, April 25th, Wanda had their junior-senior prom at Omer Shriner. All the students who attended enjoyed music, food, and an overall good time. Congratulations to Cole and Megan for getting prom prince and princess and Robert and Amy for being crowned king and queen of the prom. Sunday, April 26th, the 28th annual Blessing of the Fleet was held at Waterfront Park. The festival featured the local shrimping and fishing industries while offering live music and a boat parade and lots of other free activities for families to enjoy. The Jazz Percussion Concert was held May 1st in the PAC. The Wando Jazz Bands and Percussion Classes played a wonderful concert featuring the Wando Dance Company, the Wando Color Guard, and guest performer Bobby Lambert. Great job to everyone who performed. This has been Violet West reporting for Tribe Talk.
Many of you enjoy going to the aquarium downtown. Ricky Schmidt went fishing for some answers on those who work behind the scenes. The local South Carolina aquarium is filled with over 12 exhibits and has hundreds of visitors every day. It would be unable to run without the help of their passionate volunteers. My favorite thing is holding the snakes. Just because I like to see the reaction people have like when I'm holding a boa or something. Some people are terrified of it and some people think it's really cool, so that's my favorite. I love running the shark cart. I love doing the games with the kids, see their faces when you show them the shark jobs and show them the megalodon tubes and show them the great white tits. And so, you know, I just like the experience with all the people. The many volunteers joined the aquarium for a number of reasons. I want to study marine biology. So I've learned how to interact with people more, and I've also learned like a whole bunch of science things about snakes and alligators and different things like that. I love surfing, snorkeling, scuba diving, all that stuff. So I was naturally attracted to the aquarium as a volunteer opportunity when I came um, in 2000. Multiple responsibilities are given to these volunteers each and every day. So I usually am at the touch tank for an hour and then I have an animal on the first floor or the second floor for a half hour. And then I do the trading post sometimes. So that's where little kids can come and trade things that they find and then, yeah. Well, what I do is I, I do what's called an exhibit guide. What we do is we're the first line between our guests and the staff. Um, the staff, they run shows. We ask the exhibit guides. We answer questions about the exhibit, about the different animals that are in the exhibit. We actually operate the test tank on the second floor. So we're in charge of making sure that, that all the animals are cared for. Although there's already 350 volunteers, the aquarium is always looking for more help. If you want to become a volunteer, visit SouthCarolinaAquarium.org. From there, go to the support bar and click on Volunteer, which will take you to an easy access page. The aquarium is always looking for more help. If you want to do it, do it, because it's really fun and like you just learn a lot. So. If the volunteers weren't here, the aquarium wouldn't be able to function. This has been Ricky Schmidt reporting. As the year comes to a close, Cabaret comes around. We take a look at the hard work students have put into this performance. At the end of every year, Wando Show Choir and Wando Singers holds Cabaret, an interactive student-led performance. It's like a showcase of, of what we do and how talented our class is and how talented the Wando Singers are as well. Because it's not just show choir, it's Wando Singers as well. And it just shows how, how um, I guess, we are as a program and that we can have a fun side as well as a, um, like a concert side. Well, the week before auditions was crazy. Um, you know, even if you're in two or three songs, you had to uh, or practice it five times that week before auditions just to get it, you know, perfect to go in there. And you don't even know if he's going to put it in the show. So it's kind of like really nerve-wracking. I'm doing a... A um, mashup of Lean On Me and Waiting on the World to Change. Um, and we're going to put like a little slideshow with that, so that's going to be cool. I'm doing a shagging song, a um, bunch of class songs too, so that's going to be fun. The audience sees a show full of smooth transitions, but behind the scenes is a different story. It's crazy. We're in here <laughs> and we have, um, we have like 30 kids in our class, so like half of them are girls. So we have 15 girls running around in here. And like you have to change the fast, you have quick changes on the sides of the stage, and so you have stage managers, and they will literally like help you change like really fast because you'll have one song, and you'll have the next song, and you have to change into like your other outfit and go back on stage. That's really nice, but it's so fun. It's like really energetic and it's high, like fast pace, so the show goes by really fast for us. Well, um, before every cabaret, uh, Wilkes plays some pump up song. We get in a circle and we scream and we jump up and down. So that kind of gets us pumped up for cabaret, and then we run through the back, so, yeah. Spending so much time together, the chorus students have formed special bonds that last past their final performance. We're all like a huge family, and that um, each one of us, or most of us, have come into this room every single day for four years. It's just going to be really sentimental at the end, and just hard to like leave everyone, because it's the last chorus thing. Like, the spring concert is the last for some people, but this is like, our the end. Yeah. It's like after senior checkout. Yeah. So. This has been Sydney Mack reporting for Tribe Talk. Hello, 
Wando and welcome to this year's last segment of Sports Talk. On behalf of myself and all of the Tribe Talk staff, we would like to say congratulations to all of the sports from this past year. A special congratulations to the volleyball and the boys lacrosse teams for winning state. We would also like to say good luck to all the spring sports in their postseason play, including the baseball team, the softball team, the boys and girls soccer team, and the tennis team. Now let's take a look back at some of the plays from this past year. Hey Wando, for this year's Last Tribe Talk Presents, we bring you a dance choreographed by Anna Otano and performed by the Honors Ford Dance Class. Enjoy, and from all of us at Tribe Talk, we hope you have a great summer. Don't give a no more 